Oh, Hi, Paul. Dear. Everything OK? No, I can't find my dummy. What am I going to do? Well, suck your thumb. Suck your thumb. Right. <laughs> Not that kind of dummy, dummy. A tailor's dummy. I need it for sewing. A tailor's dummy? Mm. I never knew they had tails anyway. Not tailless. Tail oars. Oars, oars. Oars? Yeah, you need it to make clothes. Oh, you'll want a clothes oars then. <laughs> Don't be so Look, just go and find the dummy. I'll go and find the dummy. Oh, where did I put it? <laughs> Good morning, and welcome to Chuckle Vision. We've got a really interesting programme for today. It's all about making clothes. And to start with, you need a dummy. And here he is. I can't find it. Oh, no. Now, where was it supposed to be coming from? Well, you remember Dan McGann with the van? Oh, from the Isle of Man? That's right, yeah. Yes. Well, his brother, Ted the Thread. From Birkenhead? That's him, yeah. yeah. Well, he was supposed to deliver it this morning. Oh. Look, if he doesn't deliver it, you better give Bry the tie a ring. Bry the tie? Yeah. Where's he from? Barnsley. He'll lend us one. Oh. Got it? I think so. Dan McGann from the Isle of Man, mm -hmm. or Ted the Thread from Birkenhead, uh -huh. or Bry the Tie from... Um... Yeah, he's got it. <laughs> now, as I said, in today's programme, we're going to show you how to make some stylish but simple clothes. Well, as you can see, we've got everything laid out here on the table you need to make some clothes. And... Barry! You've gone bold! I've grown a bit as well, haven't I? <laughs> no, it's a dummy act. I can see that. It's just been delivered. Oh, by Dan the van or Ted the thread? Neither. That Frenchman from the post office. Who's that? Marcel the parcel. Oh. <laughs> well, earlier this week, we went out to see where you could buy some good materials. Now, if you're looking for material, the best place to go is a shop like this. There's always plenty to choose from, and you can usually pick up a bargain or two. Hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm telling them how to buy material. What for? Well, to make a cheap wardrobe. Oh. Wardrobe? Yeah. Ah, buttons. Buttons? Yeah. What do you want buttons for? Well, to go down the front. Why don't you use doorknobs? Oh, no, no, they'll be too big. Look, you go back to the studio, I'll be along in a minute. Buttons. Oh, right. Stage three of how to design and make your own wardrobe. Barry, where are you? Here are, then. Oh, there you are. What's the piece of wood for? Well, you said you were making a wardrobe, and to save you time, I've nailed the buttons on for you. How many more times? Not that kind of wardrobe. A clothes wardrobe. We're making clothes. Oh, you don't need the wood, then? Certainly not. Get rid of it immediately. OK. And don't be long, cos I need your help. Right. I've got rid of the wood. I can hear. I gave it to Tom McGraw. Tom McGraw? Yeah, he works with the saw. Oh. Here, have you seen my pattern? Yeah, it's very nice, isn't it? No, not that kind of a pattern. A pattern that you make clothes from. You lay it on your material and then you cut out around it. Cut out around it? Yeah. Can I do it? Because I love cutting out. No, you can't. This design I'm working on is too important. Oh. It's going to get me noticed. Yeah, it is a bit bright, I suppose. No, no, it's because it's unisex. Unisex? Yeah, it can be worn by both men and women. Oh, it must be very big, then. Why? Well, you said it can be worn by a man and a woman. Not at the same time. Now, look, have you seen my pattern? Well, what's it look like? Well, it's a piece of paper with black lines all over it. It was here before, only about ten minutes ago, I saw it. Oh, where is it? it... Hey, look, i tell you what, looks what? a bit like this here, look. Yeah. Just a minute. Looks very much like... It is this! Have you touched this? Me? Touch that? Have I touched that? You're asking me if I've touched that? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> look at the state of it. It's full of nail holes. Well, I used it to wrap my nails in when I was making the wardrobe, before you changed your mind. Before I changed your mind? I never... Ch look, just go and get that sorted out. All right. While I sit here and watch Armchair Theatre. Uh, but... Uh, no buts. But, but... But, 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 but... OK. Oh! But there's no chair. Christopher's gran knitted him a jumper. He tried it on. Thanks, gran. I wore it for school next year. He's joking, Gran, said his mum, and gave him a look. He'll wear it at school tomorrow, Mum. That's what he'll do. Of course I'll wear it, Gran, said Christopher. I, I can't stand jumpers that are too tight. Thank you very much for making it. If the truth be known, you could have got the whole school football team inside the jumper, and the reserves, and still have had room to rent out. In fact, it wasn't so much of a jumper, it was more of a tent. <coughs> Gran must think you're Goliath, said Christopher's sister, Deb. <clears throat> what a gorilla. Look at the length of those arms. <clears throat> it's not that I don't like it, ma'am. 
said Christopher when they got outside. I mean, it isn't really. It's just that I've got football practice after lunch and I can't play football wearing this. I mean, come on, ma'am, be reasonable. It'd be like playing football in a dress. Well, take it off first then, was all she said. But I won't have time, said Christopher. Because it was his turn to clean up the gerbils. Then he had to program the computer for the infants to play games. He wasn't going to have time to breathe before football practice. Never mind change out of Grant's jumper. When I mean, you don't get in and out of a thing like this in a hurry. You're wearing that jumper, and that's that. The next morning, Christopher got up and put on the jumper. He had one last hope. Do we really have to wear this, Dad? If your mother says so, he said. I do say so, said his mother. Now, shut up and eat your breakfast. And that was that. Suddenly, Deb started spluttering into her cornflakes. <laughs> What's happened to your hands? Christopher was beginning to wonder the same thing. It'll be perfectly all right, said his mam, rolling up his sleeves a metre. There, you see. Well, he couldn't, actually. Well, not his hands, anyway. He even rolled up. His sleeves came down to the tips of his fingers. Yes, said his dad. It's not bad at all. You'd never guess he had holes in the knees of his trousers. <coughs> You'd never guess he had trousers at all, said Deb. <laughs> it's a shame it's so short, though. A few more rows, and he wouldn't have needed any shoes either. Just think of the money he'd have saved. And with that, she went off whistling to catch the bus. <whistles> Christopher wasn't quite so happy. He couldn't take the jumper off until it was around the corner. And then he bunged her up as small as he possibly could, and jammed it into the back. The morning went just as normal right until after lunch. Christopher had just finished his fourth and last peanut butter and jam sandwich when his friend Paul came up. What about the gerbils? he asked. And there was about ten minutes to go before football practice because Mr Bunyan, the coach, was a slow eater. The gerbils live in a big old cage on top of Oxford Junior English and New Worlds to Conquer. There are two of them, Grumpy and Dopey. They have a pretty boring life up there on top of the bookshelves. Paul and Christopher had done this job hundreds of times before, so they had it pretty well organised. They put both the gerbils in the waste paper basket and then they took all of the old straw out of the cage and put in some new straw. Then Christopher would refill the water bottle while Paul filled the bowl with some fresh nuts and some seed. Then, because there was still four minutes left before football practice, they let Dopey run about for a bit on top of the table, while Paul took Grumpy on a grand tour of the classroom. This was to make up to them for having such a dull time in general. They were all having a great time, then disaster. Grumpy isn't called Grumpy for nothing. Right in the middle of this fabulous tour, while Paul was introducing him to the newts, Grumpy bit Paul on the finger and Paul dropped him. This was a real emergency. Christopher had to put Dopey somewhere safe while he helped Paul catch Grumpy. So he put Dopey in his bag on top of his jumper and he zipped it up. They got Grumpy out of the new tank in the end. Then they heard the whistle blow. So Paul and Christopher had to dash so they could get the boots on in time for practice. It's not true that Christopher forgot about Dopey. He remembered him right in the middle of the last lesson. But it was too late to do anything about it then. But as soon as Miss Harvey went out of the classroom, Christopher whipped Dopey out of the bag and put him in the cage. Then he went home. The first thing his mother said was, where's your new jumper? Christopher got it out. Look, he said, it's perfectly OK. And he held it up. It felt different somehow, lighter. Then he saw it. It wasn't like a tent anymore. It was like a mosquito net. It was full of holes, hundreds of them. Even Deb stopped chewing for a minute. Moths, she said. No, not moths, gerbils. Just one little gerbil. Dopey had certainly had a busy afternoon. And when Christopher's mother eventually got a voice back, she had a lot to say. And don't you ever expect your poor grandmother to knit anything for you again if he can't take better care of your clothes than that? No, said Christopher. I see that. I'm sorry, ma'am. And then a thought struck him. Maybe every cloud does have a silver lining. Next time, ma'am, he said, 
Why don't you get Grant and it's something for our Deb? They went upstairs to tidy his room. How's it going? Just finished. It's as good as new. How's it going? Oh, I've just finished. It's good as new. Hey, it's very good, isn't it? Isn't it good? Yes. Yeah. Well, now that I've finished smoothing out the pattern, it's time for stage three of the course. We'll lay the pattern on the material and cut it out. Oh, can I cut it out? Yeah, OK, then. Great! Yeah, but be careful with it, won't you? Because it's got to be modelled later. Oh, can I do that as well? Well, have you ever done any modelling? Well, it's my hobby. I make aeroplanes out of plastic kits. Oh, well, you've got the job, then. I'll have to make a few alterations, though, to make it fit me. Well, that's OK, but don't make a mess of it. I won't make a mess of it. Because you know what I'll do if you make a mess of it? What? Tonight, when you go to bed, a great big hairy vicious spider will come out and creep all over your pillar. Oh, I'll leave my pillar on the landing, then. Right. Now, you get on with that while we take a look at a special film report on haute couture. I bet you don't know what that is, do you? Of course I do. Horticulture is to do with plants and things. No, no. Haute couture is to do with clothes and things. Oh, is it? We here at Chucklevision thought it was about time the McChuckle brothers improved their image, so we sent them off to a leading horticulturist. Haute couturist? Haute couture person? Haute... Hey, you'll know. You need a complete change of image, you know. Hey. 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 Hey
Well, it's different, isn't it? We'll try it on you, see if you like it. Great, OK. The blue ones, now remember, mm -hmm. the fashion knot. The fashion knot. That's important. Yes. And then the tucked into the trousers. Hey. What do you think? I don't know. What do you think? A quick think twirl. <laughs> now, we've got two more silks here. Yes. For a bit of fashion magic. Fashion magic. Which one do you want? Could I have the green one? You can have the green one, aye. Right. Tuck them into the bag. In the bag. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to wave your hand over the bag. Right. Not yet. Oh. And then, as you wave your hand, you're going to say the magic word. Magic word? I want a whole new fashionable image. I want a whole... And then, and then, when you're no. doing that, yes. the two silks will vanish from the bag. We'll fly all around the studio and hopefully create and complete our fashionable ensemble. Here we go. We're oh, ready. Oh, we're ready. This is it. I think I've got Fashion it. Fashion magic. I want a whole new fashionable image. Sensational. Because <laughs> if we look into the bag, you'll find that the two silks have indeed vanished. They've gone. They've gone. Where have they gone? Now? Well, hopefully they've completed the fashion bit. Hey. And if we look at my silks, why at the heart? The yellow one. The yellow one's there, <laughs> completing the image. This Good. is it. Shall we see what yours is like? That's it. Yeah. Right on the end. On the end. One silk each. Right. And on the count of three. Yeah. One, two, three. And three. there we have. Just a minute. Back oh. to Paul in the studio. Paul? Hey, Barry, come on, hurry up. We've got to get this dress finished. You get on with it. Don't worry, I'll lock it up in just a few seconds. Oh, good. Right. Well, you've seen the materials chosen, you've seen them cut out, and soon you will see them sewn up. I've finished! Oh, uh, soon you will see them ironed and worn by our model Barry. Not a model Barry, a real Barry. Just shut up and get on with it. I'm having a bit of bother. What with? Buttoning up the braces. Braces? I didn't design any braces. No, I added them to make it a bit more unisexy. Well, I hope you haven't ruined my creation. Our creation? My creation? There's a lot hanging on this. Only the shoulders. Well, hurry up. Right, I'm ready. Oh, great. <laughs> and welcome to the 87 Tucklevision Fashion Range, designed entirely by myself. Now, Barry is wearing a cute little number which... What? My improvements. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yes. Right. OK, thank you. Who was it? Kensington Palace. Oh, no, I forgot about that. What did they want? They want to know if you can play in goal on Saturday. Oh, great, I get my stuff. 